Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can run your .NET applications and actually your entire distributed system including databases and things like Redis caches in Kubernetes and we're going to do that using the upcoming .NET Aspire project. Now .NET Aspire is very much the future of .NET especially for distributed applications and you should be on board with that. However, one of the biggest criticisms is how do I create a .NET Aspire project and actually deploy that to Kubernetes? And we're going to show Kubernetes because Kubernetes is sort of the winner when it comes to container orchestration and everyone is working with Kubernetes is one of the most valuable skills you can have as a developer. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy your application and run it in Kubernetes. This is very much a getting started and I'm not going to go too deep into Kubernetes itself. I will assume that you have a need to run your application in Kubernetes, but the great thing is it is extremely easy because .NET Aspire and another project we will use simplifies the process massively. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have the typical .NET Aspire showcase project. So I have an API that all it does is returns an in-memory weather. And then I have a Blazor web application over here, which has a weathers component or a weathers page, and I can get that weather. And just to refresh your memory, .NET Aspire has two projects that sort of tie everything together. The service defaults, which specifies some defaults about our uh, telemetry mostly, uh, and other things like service discovery and default health checks and so on, and also resilience for our applications. But then we have this app host, which is where we define things like the containers we're going to use. So in this case, I'm using Redis through a container. We also have the weather API. So we do projects.weather API and we have it as a reference. We add a couple of references here as well to the front end and then we just run it. So if I want to run this entire system with two applications and a Redis cache through a container, all I have to say is run the app host. And the moment I do that, my application will be spun up and I'm going to get a very nice dashboard to see my entire system. There we go, we have the dashboard. So as you can see, we have a container for this cache. We have console logs. We can choose the resource. As you can see, I can see everything about the Redis cache over here. I have resources. This container running in Docker, as you can see over here, Redis cache. I can see logs. I can access the weather API, as you can see, and I can go to weather. I can retrieve the weather and then I can go back and I can see things like traces, for example. So let's see that call. Here we go. You can see the spans, five spans in total. And we can see the Redis cache get to see if the Redis entry exists. We see the setting the value over here in Redis and then every subsequent request will get it from the cache. Now that is cool. But how do we go from this to Kubernetes? We already saw how to do this with Azure using the Azure CLI or developer CLI. That's because Microsoft made this and it's in their best interest to have a very easy way to deploy from your command line or your ID all the way to Azure without having to deal with well, any problems, but not everyone wants to use app container services or whatever service Azure will try to effectively sell you. What if you have a Kubernetes cluster, like I happen to have over here, for example, running Minikube locally on my machine, and I want to deploy my application to Kubernetes. Well, the only thing that is sort of opinionated for .NET Aspire by default out of the box is the way that Aspire can actually read your app host and build what's called a manifest. So using .NET run publisher manifest and specifying an output path to have an Aspire manifest.json, I can do that. Aspire will detect everything in that app host project, and then it's going to generate this JSON file saying, hey, here's your resources. You have a Redis cache. You have a weather API that is located here. You have some bindings. You have some environment variables and a bunch of other stuff. But that's all we get. And that's actually what the Azure Developer CLI gets and then converts that into Bicep, which is what eventually is converted into ARM behind the scenes and is creating and provisioning your environment and eventually deploying your applications and your system to Azure. But what if I want to run this into Kubernetes? Well, this is where a project called Aspirate, bleh, that name is terrible, comes in the picture. Now, Aspirate is an excellent project with a horrible name that effectively takes that manifest and then it builds all the code you want using the latest and greatest stuff and best practices to give you a way to deploy this application or this system to Kubernetes. I'm going to put a link in the description down below. Give it a star. I think it's an excellent project and 
really that's where dot and aspire is heading so the more attention this gets the more likely it is we're gonna get some really really nice features into it so please 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 give it a star like i do right here so let's see what aspirate can do i'm gonna go ahead and delete the aspire manifest and i'm going to go here to the console and i'm going to install aspirate because aspirate is actually a cli tool the first thing i want to do and this is in pre-release because of course aspire is in pre-release as well is a dotnet tool install g because i want it to be globally available aspirate and then pre-release because i am in pre-release so i'm gonna say that i've already installed it but once i do that i then have access to the aspirate command and i can do things like init generate build apply and destroy we're gonna see all those commands uh, the first thing you can probably do here is you can say aspirate in it which will allow you to provide a bunch of configuration and a bunch of default settings about your project we're gonna skip that because i want to dive straight into the kubernetes aspect and we can do that with things like generate and build and i'm going to show you all that now all i'm going to do to get started is i'm going to say aspirate generate and i'm going to say run this command now Aspirate will go ahead and start digging into my app host project and it's going to find that I have three components over here Redis cache, weather API and the front end so I'm just gonna say yeah I want to deploy all three of them I could also just select a few of them and only a few of them would be taken into account so if I have some dev only stuff some dashboards are dev only and so on then I could just exclude them here and as you can see it will go in and just start building everything and publishing everything uh, into containers and in this case i'm using a local registry so it's not going to docker hub but in your case you might want to push those docker images to docker hub or ecr or whatever you use to push docker images i'm going to say uh, image pull policy uh, if not present for this demonstration you can choose whichever one makes sense for your system and then i get to select a password and that is because aspirate can also do the secret management for us so I'm gonna use a password over here to encrypt my secrets, things like connection strings and so on. And that password you wanna take special care with, but anything else that is generated using that password, any, anything encrypted, in this case, the aspirate secrets.json, that you can check in into Git according to the author. It's encrypted, so there's no sensitivity involved. And as you can see, we have these three projects generated. Now we're gonna say, would you like to generate the top level customized manifest to run against your Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to say yes over here, and I have customization.yaml and then a bunch of Kubernetes related things, things like deployment.yaml, customization.yaml, and also service.yaml. Now, you might not know what these things are exactly, and I'm not going to dive into them. And that's because on Dome Train, we just launched an almost six hour course from Zero to Hero Kubernetes for Developers by Dan Clark, who also did the Docker course. And he goes through all of this, everything you need to know from knowing nothing about Kubernetes and running containers, all the way to configuration, Helm charts, deployment, scaling, everything is covered there. It is the most comprehensive and up-to-date course on Kubernetes. I'm going to put a link in the description and the first 200 of you can use code CUBE20 to get 20% off. I believe any developer should have Kubernetes knowledge and it's what I took as well to refresh my Kubernetes knowledge. So do not miss this opportunity. It is a fantastic course. So now that we have these projects over here, I can go back to Aspirate and I can show clear, Aspirate, and I can say apply and once i do that as you can see secrets are protected by a password so i have to say here's my password so they can be decrypted and used for kubernetes and then would you like to deploy generated manifest to a kubernetes cluster defined in your kube config uh, file yes i want to and i'm going to push that into the mini kube context not my docker um, desktop context so i'm going to say deploy there and once i do that boop, boop, config maps services secrets and deployment all have been created and if i go back to lens here, which is what I'm using to visualize uh, my containers and my services. I can go to pods and I can see both the front end, Redis, and Weather App. Everything has been pushed. Not only that, but if I go over here and I say, yeah, forward this uh, port over here and open it in the browser, then I can access that. And this is all running in Kubernetes. I'm not running this locally. This is running in a container. Now, if I want to destroy all that or undeploy it or unprovision it, or eventually if I want to have a deployment on top of it, I could do that with the same commands. So I can say aspirate destroy, for example, and that is going to just delete 
everything. So I'm going to say Minikube. And you can have any cluster here. You can have your AWS cluster, your Azure cluster. Anything you're using could, could be here. And as you can see, all my pods now were gone. So simple as that. Another really nice thing about Aspirate is you can also specify the output format. So if you want a slim Docker Compose based on the app host configuration, you can just say Aspirate generate output format compose. You can select all the components and that won't generate uh, a Kubernetes specific sort of set of stuff, but it will generate a Docker Compose you can take and do whatever you want with. That's one of the things many people have requested Microsoft does. And this sort of proves that the manifest.json file generated has enough information for us to build tools that take this and build, as you can see over here, a Docker Compose. So I can go over here and I can see a Docker Compose about my system, everything configured, including services, Redis and applications. And I can simply say uh, run on Docker. And once I do that, all my containers are being pulled. Here we go. Containers have started. I can see them over here, the entire system, and I can go to this port over here. And as you can see, I have my front end with my Redis cache and everything. Aspirate is an excellent project and it makes the process of deploying your Kubernetes cluster so, so easy. Building all of those scripts that you can use, but it also allows you to just simply apply it to a cluster. And that's that. I think it's a great tool. I again highly recommend you give it a star on GitHub and provide feedback if you need any features. Check out that course with Dan that will go through everything you need to know about Kubernetes. I can't recommend it enough. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.